the much anticipated National Football Show with Big Sills. By the way, we open it up with Big Sills. What a big weekend. By the way, all my prognosticating about the Eagles came to fruition. By the way, I want to thank each and every single one of you guys for jumping aboard with us on the uh, pre- and post-game show. You guys were absolutely sensational. We thank you. Ain't no freaking eating crow with big sales. We laid it out for you exactly what would happen in this ball game. And by the way, your boy, Hurts, that guy did not play well Friday night. You know, hey, you want to hear this? You know who the best football player in the National Football League was on Sunday? Say it with me. Josh Allen, how are you doing? How about them Cowboys? That was a shocker. Josh Allen, Stinsate. Yeah, TJ Watt was awful good too. He was, man. He wrecked that Atlanta game. Wrecked that Atlanta game. Hey, Right out of the gate, may I say this to Green Bay Packer fans? Shut your mouth. If anybody in here or anybody watching us thinks that Jalen Carter intentionally injured Jordan Love, you're an asshole. You are an asshole. Things like that in pro football happen. Big Sills was dead on. We could roll the tape back on Friday. What'd I say? If the Philadelphia Eagles ran the ball 25 or more times, they win the game. I didn't believe you were. That's why I picked the Green Bay Packers. What had to be one of the sloppiest games of all time. I flat out said Friday, numerous times, if the Packers allow the Eagles to run the ball 25 or more times, the Eagles win the game. How you doing? And your quarterback was the worst dude in the huddle. How you doing? We're going to get to our takeaways here in a minute. And we'll go to the numbers. Let me put this out there for all of you Eagle honks. Jalen Hurts in the last 18 games is 23 turnovers. He's not a championship quarterback right now. How many people in here would go like this? This is called a trend. Dallas has the best quarterback in the division. How about this? Hey, 304, Jalen Hurts has 23 turnovers in 18 games. 23 turnovers. 23 turnovers in 18 games. How many people think that's good football? How many people think that's good football? This guy's going to win games because of the talent on the offense. He's not a championship quarterback. That was a pathetic performance. His late throws and decision-making were awful. Awful. Hurts is 11-3 again. You know, you mean that team is against... Okay, Jalen Hurts was under 60% in that game completion percentage, and he had three turnovers. How you doing? And the only reason you win that game is because Barkley's in the huddle. Wasn't because of your quarterback. One game, this guy says. How about 23 games? All right, how about 18 games? His last 18 games, Hurts. He has 23 turnovers. You can't hide from that. You tell me all the time about Josh Allen. Well, 23 turnovers in 18 games. How you doing? How you doing? One of the sloppiest games of the weekend, too, by the way. Let's get into the takeaways. Because I just don't want to hang a conversation on a guy who was your worst offensive football player. Josh Allen had no picks, ass bag. 
How you doing? Had four touchdowns. And nobody on the team. Okay? And nobody. Get this. Spike. 18 games, 23 turnovers. Eagles scored 34 points and played average. Scary. And your quarterback was below average. Like I said, if you carried the ball more than 25 times, you were going to win the ball game. And you did. Here we go. Here's the takeaways. Then we'll get into, and by the way, your run defense blows. Don't want to hear that one game. Hold on. Let's get that super chat up. Thank you very much, Flexion. Don't want to hear that one game excuse. Jalen sloppiness says a lot. Paying him too much, says Flexion. Flexion, it's 18 ball games. He's got 23 turnovers. Here we go. 34-29. 34-29. The Eagles win. Jalen made bad decisions, but he was also the reason why we won the game. No, we're not. Saquon Barkley was the reason you won that game, not Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts was a 60% quarterback throwing the football in today's NFL is atrocious. Is atrocious. Okay, let's get into the takeaway. By the way, please hit the like button. You guys were great. Thank you very much for the pre and post game show. Okay, thank you. Here we go. Um, what what's the what's the record in the in those games? Zero and one when it matters the most. Playoffs. Um. You could tell one side of the football was ready to play and the other side wasn't ready to play. The exhibition or their lack of exhibition football for the offense was clearly on display. And most notably, your quarterback, who was late on throws, poor decision making. As a passer, not very good. As a runner, what Jalen Hurts did in that football game was because of his legs they won. Nothing he did throwing the ball. I thought the pass to Barkley in the back of the end zone was a great throw. I did, and that was set up by both receivers, Devontae Smith and also with A.J. Brown and what they played as decoys. And Barkley made a great catch in the back of the end zone. Okay? That was really a great catch by him. I thought the defense actually played better at least in the first quarter. And the reason that you won the ball game is because of the first quarter. And by the way, your two defensive tackles are still out of shape and fat. They got destroyed against the run. They got destroyed. Um, especially in the second half. Josh J Jacobs was almost running the ball at 10 yards a clip. Once again, I say this. That's not a championship football team. That's not a championship defense. It, it, they, were, they were killed everywhere. Um, it picked up better for the offense as the game went on, but they weren't ready to play. Plain and simple, they were not ready to play. Um, and they, like I said, they did pick the pacing up in the second half. The offense did, but it was because they were trying to run the ball. Packers were at the top of the NFC until we beat them. No, I still think Green Bay was. Now, Green Bay, if Jordan Love is out with significant time, even if he's out two months, they're finished. They're absolutely finished. Let me get to a guy, and I love going to Bob because he's the only one out of the gate that's got common sense. Seals, while I agree, Jalen Hurst was the worst player in the huddle. He was the player in the huddle most affected by the scheme change. Absolutely. Great take. Jalen's performance in the first four games is his stress test. Remember what I told you on Friday, my friend? I told you on Friday, Bob, what? That Jalen was going to have a bumpy start to his season. Well, he did. Well, he did. Um, there were by far two stars in this ballgame. Uh, Zach Bond was out of his mind. He was out of his mind. Great. I mean, holy shit. If it wasn't for Zach Bond, 
you had no pressure on the quarterback whatsoever. Your front seven stunk at creating pressure. Stunk. And Green Bay doesn't really have, okay, doesn't really have um, a really great O-line. They stunk. Here, again, I will go back and say this. They won the game because they kept Green Bay off the scoreboard with touchdowns in the first quarter. They put 14 up, they win. Okay, but they did not allow it. Okay? Um, the two tackles, conditioning. Holy shit, 163 yards rushing. They stunk. They were absolutely terrible in stopping the run. And for that matter, creating pressure on the quarterback. Stunk. And creating pressure. Just terrible. The front seven itself. I thought Josh Sweat played pretty well. Of all the guys up front, I thought he played well. Okay? I did. There was no pressure on the quarterback. They could not stop the run at all. And your quarterback had poor decision making in the ball game. This reminds me a lot of New England last year. And as I stated, Hurts in 18 games is 23 turnovers. It's now a trend. Is he a turnover machine? He's getting there. He's getting there. Nobody on the planet with any kind of brains. Hey, Bob, since you're the only one in here that is not going to be stupid right now, would you not agree? Um, did you not agree that last 18 games, 23 turnovers is an awful lot, right? Here's Hertz's numbers. 20 of 34, 278, two TDs, two picks, 58.8 completion percentage in a league that favors quarterbacks at around 65%. He was terrible on late on throws, had an 80 quarterback rating, had three turnovers in the game. There were numerous other opportunities that he was late on throws. It was all over the joint. And like Bob said, there is absolutely no question he's been affected by the change at the quarterback position, and you saw it in the game on Friday. Didn't it look like Nick Sirianni had his hands in play calling, red zone, the second half with the shotgun, no running back formations? Actually, Surgical, I'm going to say no, because you know what's the one thing you know to Surgical? Nick Sirianni was nowhere around Jalen Hurts at any time in that game during the sequences when the offense was on the field or off the field. He had no say. He'd go over to the receivers, the O-line, talk to the defense. But at the end of the day, he had nothing to – he never spoke to Jalen Hurts one time during that football game. And I thought that that was maybe by design. Okay? I did. I thought that was maybe by design. Okay? Because he was nowhere to be seen. Hurts was so bad, yeah, but they won. True. But we said that all last year as well, and then come playoffs, Tampa Bay knew how to shut them down. I'll say it one more time to you. Um, the offense, if it wasn't for Barkley, he was the star of the ball game. I got game balls to give out, too, and we'll go to the numbers here in a minute. But if it was you take Barkley's 34, if you take Barkley's 34-yard runaway, they barely ran the ball. Amber Alert for Bryce Huff. We'll get to that guy. Holy shit, is he nowhere to be seen? Nolan Smith, too. Um, A.J. Brown was a force. Five catches, 119 touchdown. He is a beast after he catches the football. There is no getting around it. He is a beast, man. I mean, wow. It is hard to get him on the ground, and it, he is difficult, even in double teams. Um, I thought Reed Blankenship played really well. He had a really good Friday night. Bunch of tackles, a pick. I mean, he did really well. I thought, I thought he played center field for them. And in that too high safety, I thought he played pretty well. Um, 
I thought Kellen Moore's offense, one thing I noticed about Kellen Moore's offense, the wide receiving routes, and I mentioned this in the postgame show, they were just better designed. I mean, they looked like pro routes on what you saw on, on Friday night. They, they He had a really good sense of designing plays. And you saw that put out on display. Okay? Yeah, the difference between Mahomes and Hurts is he went Super Bowls. Your guy gets beat by Baker Mayfield. Hey, I got a question for Cleveland Brown fans that check in here. One question for you. Would you rather have Baker Mayfield right now or would you rather have Deshaun Watson? Who would you rather have? Um, Mike Zimmer will have Jalen in hell. Mike Zimmer did a great job. Now, remember, they're missing their two tackles and Chubb, but Michael Parsons was all over the joint. But, hey, how about this? You look back on that whole nightmare now, Deshaun Watson looks like I, I don't know what that is. I mean, he doesn't even – he looks like, of all the big money guys, the worst – this guy looks worse than Derek Carr right now. It's crazy to say this. I think the Browns would rather have Baker Mayfield back. We'll talk later on that. Quinion Mitchell, I thought he played really well. Um, yeah, he's a pretty good ball player. Yeah, he, he's he's coming along. I thought there were times out there that he was route for route. Now, he got beat and spun around a bunch of times, but he also made a, a bunch of plays. For his first ball game in the NFL as a corner, he played exceptionally well. I give him high marks. First game, um, yeah, I thought he played really well. I did. Um, I'll say this one more time to you. That, that Jordan Love and the Packer fans going nuts on Jalen Carter is ridiculous. That guy did not do that on purpose. Xander, I just missed the super chat. Can we please get that up? All super chats, guys, go to the go to the front here. Daniel Jones, Watson, Bryce Young are all finished. Man, I, I mean, Daniel Jones. Mike Zimmer will have Jalen in hell. I saw that. Yep. Jordan Davis and Jordan Love. Or um, Jordan Davis and Jalen Carter need to get in better shape. They were out of shape in the second half. They got destroyed against the run. Just destroyed. Now, here's a question for you. Barkley's on pace for 400 carries. You think he can carry that kind of max load the rest of the year? Now, obviously, you're not going to give him 24 carries. But there is no question that they won that ball game because the quarterback was running, not throwing. And the running back was a force in the game. You know what? I'm going to make this prediction also about the New York Giants GM, Joe Schoen. When that general manager in Tennessee got fired because he let A.J. Brown out the building, I don't know how Joe Schoen looks John Mara in the face and just allows Barkley. At least that was a trade. At least Tennessee got a, got a trade for that. It was a first-round trade. You just let Saquon Barkley walk out the building for nothing. And you told him, hey, and you bullshitted him. Joe Schoen is a horrible general manager. He was on display during hard knocks. He's going to lose his job. There is a, he might be worse than Dave Gettleman. Offensive line is still atrocious. I, I mean, the New York Giants, they look like the worst team in the league right now. They just look like the worst team in the league. I thought Micaiah Becton played well. Now, let's circle back to the front page here. 34-29. You won. Okay? As bad as that looked, you won against a good team. I don't know what Green Bay was thinking either. Green Bay was all the penalties. That's not an eagle thing. I'm not making an excuse on why you beat them. That's their problem. Green Bay was sloppy, undisciplined. Guys were dropping footballs all over the place. Their defense is worse than I thought. 
Um, yeah, even before love, you were like this. Jesus, criminy. You got to play a little stouter there on defense. Okay? And they couldn't. And they just could not. But they were they were sloppy. It was a terrible football game with some high drama at the end. Terrible football games can create some drama. Okay? I mean, oh, yeah. Thank you very much, Cosmo. Let me get into this because I said this during the um, – um, post game show, the NFL putting those fucking players on a shitty field like that again. Jalen Carter, in my opinion, you could blame all the shit you want on him, but that football field that they put that guy on, you don't put football players on soccer fields. You know why? They're worms that weigh 105 pounds. These are 375 pound men at some spots. 380 in some spots. You don't put a guy that size on a trampoline. You have to have a proper footing to a football field. Okay? That was, again, the NFL and their decision-making and how they do this is ridiculous. Soccer players are little worms. They're little dudes. Pro football players don't play where little dudes play. Okay? They don't. You don't put big dudes on a wormy field. On display again. Hey, another thing. Gardner Johnson? Shit, dude. Play better, kid. Holy shit. Where, what, what were you doing out there? I mean, how many times was he spun around out there? I mean, Gardner Johnson looked like shit out there. The, the defense gave up over four. But by the way, you've improved nothing past defense wise. You've improved nothing against the run. Your linebackers probably played the best out of any unit. My takeaway on Nakobe. Hot and cold. There were some sorry ass plays and there were some good plays. Am I encouraged? A little. Not a lot. A little. Okay? A little. Give him a grade? C? Thought he was average. Zach Bond? Thought he was A plus. A plus. There were times that Kobe Dean was destroyed in there and covering people out of the backfield. He was terrible. And I agree with some of you in here. Garner, I mean, um, Garner Johnson was the first, worst defensive football player. You could make an argument. Bryce up for him in that game on Friday. Okay, your two big acquisitions for Howie. Eight million a year. And 17 4 a year were terrible. They were terrible. Terrible football. Um, you get the win. Now let's go to the numbers here. This is even more insane. How you look at how this thing broke down on Friday night. Yes, Nolan Smith was god awful. Dude, I'm in the room now that he's floating towards being a bust. Bryce Huff has a long way to go on being a three-down player. He's not. I don't know what you're going to do. I pray to God Zach Bond for you plays that way throughout the year because you're going to need him too. Because if that guy doesn't put that kind of pressure on the quarterback, again, you're not going to win a ton of games. Okay. Your front seven still against the run was terrible. Time of possession, kind of around the same room, 32-27. You guys were in that back and forth. Both teams having all kinds of issues. with uh, Pre-snap penalties again, which drive me crazy. Um, first downs, Philly had 25, Green Bay 19, kind of still in the same room. But the problem that you have here 
Look at this on third down. Here's Jalen Hurts on third down, 4-14. Bryce Love was worse, 3 of 11. It was terrible. He had three and outs everywhere. You couldn't get off. You couldn't keep stay on the field unless you ran the ball. You can't do it throwing it. This is what made this game ridiculous. How can you have this disparity in, uh, in plays? You had 74 plays to 58. You held the Green Bay Packers to under 60 plays. It's incredible. I mean, you basically had to run 30 more plays to stay in that game with Green Bay. I need an SOS, Huff, for Huff Sills. Absolutely, he was terrible. Okay, he was terrible. Average plays per yard for a play. Um, Green Bay averaged seven yards a play. Philly averaged five and a half. Here, like I said, you take the 34-yard runaway, you have about 119 rushing yards. And Green Bay ran for 163 yards. I mean... And they did it on 21 attempts. You had 38 rushing attempts. You're going to win the game. This is exactly what I said. You run the ball 25 or more times, you win. Net rushing. Green Bay had 266. Or net, net passing, excuse me. Green Bay 266. Pittsburgh or uh, Philly had 251. 10 penalties. For Green Bay and seven for Philly. And the turnovers were 2 2 when it came to picks, and Jalen had a fumble. I mean, Jesus, Grammy. Here are the numbers Jalen Hurts under 60% completion percentage, 30 of 34, 278, 2 and 2. Love was 7 of 34, 260. Two touchdowns and a pick. Barkley was great. 24 um, carries, 109 and two touchdowns. Started a game for the offense. Jacobs was 16 to 84, most of that coming in the second half. Hertz had 13 carries. Let me see what that comes out to. Let me see what 13 carries comes out to. Had to have 13 carries in that game to win. Let me see something here. 13 times. So he's on pace for 221 carries. Never make it. You had to have a guy who's going to run the ball more than any time in his entire career this year. He won the game because of his legs, not his arm. Since the beginning of last season, no player has more touchdowns than Hurts. Congratulations to you, kid. Counting touchdowns or Super Bowls here? Snap out of it. AJ, five catches for 119 yards and a touchdown. He was sensational. Reed was great. Four catches, 138. Couldn't defend him. Smitty, old reliable. You needed a play, throw it to Smitty. Seven catches, 84 yards. Dobbs, four catches, four of 50 yards for Green Bay. Here's the one thing that you did like to see when it came to the passing attack here by, by Jalen. He did go to eight different people. So there was a progression of spreading it around. But in that process, again, it's going to take time. That's why he was under 60%. He was under 60%. Um. Seals, we discussed this last week. Vic scheme will surrender yards. We need to get used to seeing. We said that, right? 400-plus yard games. Our personnel does not fit the scheme yet. A boring offense will help our D. Absolutely. Remember what we said? That they were going to, um, they were, they were going to give up a lot of, lot of yards inside the 20s. Okay? I thought Maddox stunk. 
I mean, Jesus, Grimini. There were, hey, dude, there was a lot of people on that defense that were terrible. Okay? Doesn't want to talk about Josh Allen. He was the best player on the field Sunday in the league. 137.7 um, rating, four touchdowns. They were down 17. He said, I got this. Carried his football team back. What are you talking about? He was the best player on Sunday in the National Football League next to TJ Watt. What the fuck are you talking about, guy? Guy had a 137 uh, rating on, on Sunday. What are you talking about? And won and has nobody to throw to. Sills, do you think Moore is going to stay stubborn with all this passing or will he use Barkley to run or are they stubborn so Jalen doesn't get hurt? I think they got to run the ball as much as they possibly can. Okay? I think they got to run the ball because they are not going to win by throwing it. They won that game not because of A.J. Brown. They won that game because of Saquon Barkley. They need to preserve that guy as much as they can. That guy is like adding Kevin Durant to the Golden State Warriors. In that offense, I'll tell you what, it's a, it's one game, but he did have an impact. Okay? He did have an impact in that game. Okay? Um, Sills with these backhanded compliments, I don't backhand compliment anybody. I'll tell you exactly what happened Friday night. You don't like it? That's a you thing, dude. Eagles played a Super Bowl contender and your quarterback looked like shit. And it's week one. Okay? He looked great when he ran the ball. I saw some 22 out there. The pass to Barkley down the sideline was really good. Um, Like I said, Barkley is McCaffrey for the Eagles. Not happening. Um, Don't put those two together. He has not done anything near the things that Christian McCaffrey – and Christian McCaffrey did him in Carolina. Don't forget that. He had 100 catches one year and 1,000 yards receiving and running in Carolina. I'm not even talking about the San Francisco bar, um, CMC. I'm talking about the McCaffrey in Carolina. Okay? The McCaffrey in Carolina I'm talking on a shitty football team, was sensational. Um, Brian, so you predicted this for Hurts in the offense, but do you think the defense just needs time to mature, or do we need free agents? No, I wouldn't do anything right now, Brian. Brian, I wouldn't do anything. I'd let that defense and let Vic keep working it. I don't want new faces, Brian. I was actually... I know John McMullen wasn't happy with the defensive play, but for what I thought I was, they gave up more yards than I thought on the ground. They did. I thought that would be a I thought that would resemble a little bit better of last year, them stopping the run more, but they were terrible, man. And Green Bay's got a shitty O line, especially in running the ball. They owned them. They were not in shape. Either that's a remedy from not having exhibition football or conditioning for as let me let me say this to you for as hard as they say that the practices and the camp was it wasn't on display for your front seven friday night because they were gassed they were gassed sills um i'd pump the brakes on this tubes did you see tj edwards in that bear defense and how well they played were you watching that Bears defense? That's the, they won that game because of the Bears defense. They were good, man. Okay, Andreas. Well, that's what happens when you only got one player in offense. You, he was the best player in the league next to TJ Watt on Sunday, dude. He was the best player in the league. Even Shady McCoy said that. Shady on his show today goes, Allen was sensational. He, he's, he believes that Josh Allen's going to win the Most Valuable Player Award. At a Shady McCoy's mouth, he goes, I was insane. 
He wasn't sane. I agree. Um, as Big Sills predicted, how, how'd that center exchange go between Jalen and Cam Jurgens? How do you think that went? Communication issues? Fumble. Snapping the ball, not having game reps, bang, turnover. Practicing it at Novacare versus playing it in Brazil versus the Packers are two different things. Two different. Hey, do me a favor. Stop comparing Josh Allen to Jalen Hurts. Hurts stunk. Josh Allen was electric. Long season, RTF. Long season. I know they got beat by the Bucks. I know. Okay. Apparently, we are the Giants. No. See, once again, here's a guy not understanding where you are. We're not talking about winning regular season games anymore. I thought we were in here talking about Super Bowls. Aren't you talking about being a Super Bowl? You lost to the Cardinals. You got beat last year by Jonathan Gannon and that same Cardinal team. Did you not? You just got beat by the Cardinals. Last 18 games, 23 turnovers. Okay. Last 23, Josh Allen was sensational. Sensational. Hurt stunk. Game balls now. Let me throw that off to you now. Who would you give game balls to on the Eagles for their game against the Packers. Xander Krause at 3.30, Angelo Cataldi 4.30. Saquon, Bond. Bond. If Jalen stunk, what do you say about love? He stunk too. As a lifelong Eagle fan, I can honestly say I would rather have Josh Allen at quarterback than Hurts, period. Shit, I would probably take Dak over Hurts right now. Hurts isn't like that. Facts. Dak Prescott was sensational yesterday in times they needed him. And by the way, the Cowboys end up giving what he wanted, $240 million, 230 of it guaranteed, $60 million annually. And the Cowboys looked awful good yesterday, albeit there were a lot of missing pieces to that Browns team. But that's no excuse to get run over like that in your own barn. Dallas Cowboys kicked the shit out of them. Michael Parsons was – he was the second-best defensive player – on Sunday, next TJ. I mean, he was out of hand. Here are my game balls. Saquon Barkley, 24 carries, 109, two TDs, four and a half yards of carry. Um, 34-yard run, had a touchdown in the air. He, he was the best player for the Eagles on Friday night. Zach Bond, 15 tackles, two sacks, TFL. Couple of hits on the quarterback, constant pressure. I mean, he was sideline to sideline. I mean, of all the players that we saw during uh, camp and all the people talking, there is no question that that guy had the game of a lifetime. Now, can he keep it up again? We have to see consistency out of that. But 
that's a hell of a way to start. Now, this is a great take by Mike here. Mike, I haven't read it all the way through, but um, you're right. Dan, sometimes teams get ugly wins. And sometimes, Mike, teams start out with ugly losses. You played football. You're right. You're not, you're not wrong. And you know you won the game. That's right. You that's why I said, hey, Mike, you win a game like that, even though you don't play your best. Mike, I'm talking more about championship football. And again, it it's game one. Okay, I agree, Hertz. Um, I agree. Hertz has played bad, but he deserves more time. Yes, he of course he does. Of course he does. Mike, you're right. But my point, Mike, here, here's something that I said, Mike, that people don't understand. I said that Jalen was going to have a bumpy start to it, and he was going to look like you thought he was, and none of you wanted to agree. Well, guess what? He did. This is going to be a work in progress for him. Hey, Sills, will you stop giving Allen all the praise? He still has never gotten to a Super Bowl. And Hurts had... Dude, will you stop overblowing the fact that Hertz got to a Super Bowl? Because every time I bring that up with, or I bring that up with Colin Kaepernick, or I bring that up with Jimmy Garoppolo, you dismiss it. You dismiss it. I don't see Jimmy Garoppolo or Colin Kaepernick or any of those quarterbacks being revered because they took a team to the Super Bowl. And Ka and, and, and Garoppolo was the main reason why they got there, one of the main reasons they got there. I mean, come on. And by the way, those quarterbacks all got paid because of their ability, not because they got to a Super Bowl. Your quarterback is the only quarterback that got paid because he got to a Super Bowl. And that's why you're still seeing inconsistent play. It Get this. You guys keep bringing up 22. I'm bringing up the last 18 ball games. He's got 23 turnovers. You, there, there's nothing you can say that says championship football about that. Nothing. Nothing. That is turnover machine shit. When you have more turnovers in the last 18 games than you have games played, you got a problem. He had three turnovers in the first game. Three. Three turnovers. Three. Um, Josh Allen has the second most. Get this. See this right here? Since you 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 forget that Josh Allen has a higher win percentage than Jalen Hurts does. You forget that. AJ Brown gets a game ball. AJ Brown had 23 yards of catch. Five for 119 and a touchdown. He was a beast. I gave bleed, uh, I gave Reed Blankenship a game ball. Eight tackles, pick. I thought he played well, man. I'm not sure there'll ever be a game that I don't give Devontae Smith a game ball. Oh, dependable. I need some yards. Go get it to him. I'm not saying AJ is not a sensational player, but there's just something about Devontae that, you know, to me, um, he, he's just a reliable player. And here's the last one. So I've given Saquon, Zach Bond, Reed Blankenship, Devontae Smith, and Quinion Mitchell. Game balls. I gave Quinion one. For his first game, played really well. Played really well. You can add another player too, V. You can add Zach Bond into that. You could put him in there too. 
I'm sure I'll talk shit on him again. It's one game. Don't you understand? Get this. Here, here's another example of Senor being just over the top. One game is not an indictment on one's career or a, a plus or a minus. He had a good game. That doesn't mean he's a good player consistently. That does not mean that. Jesus criminy, he had a good game. He hasn't played great games like that. Holy shit. You can't be dumber, man. Get this, guys. So if a guy plays bad, you want me to still call him an asshole. I don't do that. Guy played well. Guy played great. Hurts sucked, in my opinion. Or wait, let me take it back. Hertz is not playing good enough football to win a Super Bowl. He's playing good enough to win your games in an NFC. He's not playing good enough to win Super Bowls. You can't be a turnover machine like that and win. And have poor decision-making in the passing game. You, if Jalen had those turnovers like Mahomes, I bet you anything, Mahomes has more turnovers than Hertz does. In the last two years, I would bet that. Or it's pretty close. But what's the difference? That guy throws the ball and he's not late on throws. He finds receivers. He can throw you out of trouble. That's the difference in those dudes. Hurts can't. You know how many late throws he had in that game? There were at least 10. 10 late throws. In that ball game by Hertz. Now, is that a product of the new offense? No question. Setting protections? I'll tell you one thing. I did not think he was that terrible against the Blitz. I actually, if you want to give it a little bit of love, I didn't think he was bad against it. Let Jalen play in the AFC. He wouldn't touch a Super Bowl. AFC rode so much harder than NFC. Absolutely. The guys you have to play week in and week out in the AFC, it's like playing in the Southeastern Conference. Jalen would never get past Mahomes. A absolutely. Okay. I thought Jalen did, you know, yes. Yeah. I, hey, if I'm not mistaken, Scott, wasn't he like six or seven against the Blitz? I, I thought that was something that you can hang your hat on that you went, you know, that, look, that was okay. I mean, you know, you go back and you watch it and you're like, that's blitz. That's good. So I think, you know, I, I, I think there was some improvement. You saw some improvement against the blitz. Okay. Um, get this folks. Hey guys. It's a new effing offense in the first. I don't even think a quarterback, I don't think any quarterback had a great game this weekend. You're probably right. You're probably right. I'm trying to think. I mean, Dak, 19 of 32, that's not great. Tua had 338 yards. I'll tell you what, man, that Tua could put some yards up, dog. Hey, how about that fiasco down in Miami? Putting Tyree Kill face down. Get this. It was a seatbelt violation. It wasn't speeding. It was a seatbelt violation. I spoke to Calais Campbell. He got cuffed too. A man who won the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award for character was cuffed by the Miami Dade Cops. I love the Miami Dade Cops. I've done a ton of events with them. But a seatbelt violation, you disrespected the guy as he was going to work and 
You put him face down, cuffed on a seatbelt violation. Yeah. You don't put a black guy down, face down, for a seatbelt violation when you know you'd never do that to a white guy. You wouldn't even cuff him. Then you cuff Calais Campbell? Like, and now they put a couple of those cops on administrative leave. What the fuck are you thinking? I posted a picture. I go at 10 a.m. in the morning. He's got his hands cuffed, and then he's got his hands cuffed again. I loved what he did to the cops at the stadium. That was out-and-out -out racism. I cannot believe what I was watching. Guys are taking videos and sending them to me on the way to the stadium. You know, I got a ton of people down in South Florida. Thank you guys for doing that. And people who watch it were sending me. I couldn't believe it. And like I said, I have a hot and cold relationship with Drew Rosenhaus. Drew Rosenhaus was in the car. I pulled him over. He didn't have a seatbelt on. I think he got a Lamborghini or some shit. Drew Rosenhaus was in the car. He says, what are you doing? The guy's like, I'm going, I'm going to the stadium. We got, I, I mean, we got to play in four hours here. And cop got him out of the car, started thinking that he was resisting arrest. They they did arrest him. You know what they gave him a citation for? A seatbelt violation. A seatbelt violation. You put him face down and cuffed him. You got a lot of answering to do. I mean, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I must have had a hundred videos sent to me. People won't going by there on their way to Hard Rock. A lot of Miami Hurricane fans, they they go, they were at the game the day before. And so what they'll do is they'll buy tickets for the Dolphin game too the next day. They're sending me videos of this shit. I'm posting them. Hey, Takeem, I think that's something that I think it was a seatbelt violation and texting shit, something going on. And um the Miami-Dade County cops arrested him. Did you see what I did? I tweeted out the uh, the chief of police there in uh, Miami Gardens. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? You know better than this. She sent me a DM. She's like, this is not us. This is Miami-Dade. Miami-Dade handles the security at the Hard Rock. And I'm like, chief, someone's got to get down there and stop this before something gets out of hand. I'll tell you what, if that's a normal black guy, I don't know what happens. I'm just saying, thank God it's Ty Tyree Kill. And by the way, not that Tyree Kill is some sort of saint or anything, like my wife said, but you cuffed Calais Campbell too? Like, what in your mind are you doing? I mean, what, what in your mind are you doing? I'm, the guy... Seatbelt violation, probably, I heard the texting too. They cuffed him and put him face down on the ground. Four hours before a football game. Then he goes and catches. What did he have in the game? 130 yards receiving, PD. Then he goes into the end zone. He puts his hands behind his back, being cuffed. Oh, man. I don't know about you, man. But he, he, hey. Drew Rosenhaus is not going to let that go. And you know what the league did? They let him play. They're like, no, no, no it's just not on him. Mm. Um, yeah, so that, that'll be for later on in the show. What up, 203? What's up there, my friend? How are you? That Tyreek killed. My God, I know, man. That thing was out of hand. Guys, do me a favor. Please hit the like button. Chills. I would be very careful passing judgment on Hill's situation. Reports down there are he refused to comply with an officer order. That's not what I, that's not what Calais Campbell told me. He was there. And I take Calais Campbell's word over anybody. One of the, one of the most respected and highest character guys um, you could possibly have. And dude, I'd, I'd lose my shit too if you were going to arrest me for a seatbelt violation. So let me get Angelo Cataldi's coming on at 4 30. So we will get Angie on with us too. So let's do this. 
What would be the grade you would give your Eagles versus the Packers on Friday night? A B. Surrendering over 400 yards is a B. A B. Get this. What these guys don't get, the higher the grade, the less room to grow. There you go, Dustin. There you go, Dustin. There you go. Because if that's a B effort, you ain't got a lot of room. You ain't got a lot of room to grow. If I were you, I would even go D plus. D plus and you won. You know what you want to say? You want to be stupid and go, hey, that's an A effort or a B minus effort. Look, that's the best you can play. You are not a championship football, my friend. You are not. Look at some of you. You're diminishing your own football team by playing, by saying some of you are saying you play B football out there. When your defense looked terrible and your offense and your quarterback were below average, your quarterback wasn't even average in completion percentage. And you're giving these guys B pluses? Well, then you don't really think very highly of your football team. Me, I'd look at that and go like this, C minus, with a ton of room to grow. With a ton of room to grow. Get this. Let's take Steve's talk. Let's let's have Steve's take here. What did he say? A plus one and oh. Guess what, guys? Do you think that effort that they had on Friday night is good enough to win a Super Bowl by Steve's liking of it being that's A plus effort that the Eagles have versus the Packers? He thinks that's an A plus effort. Because if that's the Eagles A plus effort, you will only win seven games. Thanks, Steve. Thanks for the content. Personally, I say this. That was a C-minus effort with a lot of room to grow. There you go, Brian. I don't usually like this, but okay. I'm not eating anything, buddy. Nothing. I have nothing to eat. I told you exactly on Friday. I picked the Packers to win for sure because I didn't believe you'd run the ball, but you did. Said if you carry the ball 25 or more times, you win. I didn't think you were. You had to carry it 38 to win. Okay. I did pick the Packers and they lost. Yeah, because I thought you weren't going to do what was the right thing. They did. They proved me wrong. They ran the ball. Okay. I right, big sales. You think Eagle Owls beating Falcons? Um, hey, Khalid, after watching the Falcons play, I'll say this to you. B. John Robinson is spectacular. Kirk Cousins was terrible. At home. I watched that Steeler game. And boy, I'll tell you, I, 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 I do may have to revamp that. Absolutely. Okay. Robinson was sensational in that game, but Cousins was everywhere, man. Um, another prime time game. Another, uh, dude, he was not good. I'll tell you what, if that guy puts up another game like he did against Pittsburgh, they're going to put Michael Penix in sooner than you think. Let's see here. Penix incoming. Can we talk about Devin White getting traded to the Niners? More interesting topic. Um, God, that would be insane if he got traded. Sills Lions lost. Lions didn't lose. They won in overtime. 
Um, I know they paid him too. They paid him big money, almost fifty million annually. Hey, hey I'll just say this, Matt. Matt Ryan did not look very good. Or uh, Matt Ryan, excuse me. Kirk Cousins did not look very good in that ball game. Any pressure in his face and he crumbles. Boy, did they not. And did you see that double pump that he had with all the players around him? Then he threw it into double coverage to end the ball game. You're like, why? That was such a Pittsburgh win. I mean, Justin Fields, I don't know. He's just not a good ball player. He's, you know what? He's so athletic, though. But he can't throw the ball. Justin Fields cannot throw the football. Now, if you want a quarterback that's going to win with his wheels, I think he can win you some ball games. I'll tell you what, he's a cheap man's version of Hurts. Hurts is a superior passer to him, though. See, that's the majority of the kind of quarterbacks you get that are dual threat, are like Fields, okay, who can't throw. Hertz can throw. Hertz is, Hertz is the best dual threat quarterback I've seen that can throw in the modern time here. Shipley and Barkley said, look good, need more. RTF, I thought they did too. I thought Shipley coming out in the perimeter and taking that catch up to sidelines, I thought that was pretty good too. I did. Guys, please um, hit the like button. We'll, we'll, Go through the National Football League week. Let me let me do this here. Oh, wait. You know, I'll tell you what we'll do. I'll talk about – we'll talk about how you thought Vic Fangio and Kellen Moore did in their opening game. A couple performances, too. Oh, by the way, I openly root against Shador Sanders. I guarantee you the New York Giants draft him next year and the Giants take him and there'll be another colossal disaster. They go into Norm, they go into uh, Lincoln and get killed. He blames wide receivers. He blames his O-line. And then he walks off the field with two and a half minutes left. And you know what the f stupid father says? Well, he wanted to turn the showers on for his teammates because that's the kind of kid he is I was like this guy has no character he's worried about his watch and he's worried about his checking account he's not worried about winning games Nebraska kicked the shit out of them it really wasn't close and now what you have is you have all these um, media guys covering for him I guarantee you Deion Sanders resigns by the end of the year. Okay? He resigns because he can't take it. He's not. Did you guys see that coach from Northern Illinois crying, going into Notre Dame and winning? Played for the uh, Northern Illinois team. He's crying for his guys. They beat Notre Dame, fifth-ranked team. That's a coach. That's a coach. Loves his guys. Loves the journey. I watched that game. My daughter's like, Dad, my, my daughter cried. And I was like, that's football right there, man. Going into a hostile environment and winning like that when no one thought you were. You want to hear something even more effed up? Notre Dame paid NIU, Northern Illinois, $1.5 million to beat them. How you doing? How you doing? Hey, Colorado. That's a coach. That's a coach. Oh, one thing also, too, Abe. Who's the head football coach in Michigan right now? <clears throat> who's the head coach at Michigan? Des, I saw a hey, Des. I did see some RPO back. We'll talk more about that here with Kellen here. Okay, we will. Who's the head football coach of um, Michigan right now? What's his name? 
That's a true statement. I don't know if Allen can do that. Well, let me just say this to you. That guy is not going to get the time he needs to fit in as Michigan's head coach. Okay. Um, Moore's not going to get the opportunity. Okay. He's just not. And I think you know why. They're going to run his ass out of there. So, Kellen Moore, Vic Fangio, Xander Krause at 330, Angelo Cataldi will be with us at 430. We'll talk, we'll dive more into what went on with Hurts in that game. We also have week one of the NFL. There were, like I said, there were interesting performances, plus Dak Prescott's contract. And I don't know what's going on with Deshaun Watson. Boy, I'll tell you, that could go down as the worst trade in the history of the National Football League. Tonight also, San Francisco hosting the Jets. Hit the like button. Guys, where are we on the like list? By the way, thank you for this past weekend or the um, or this past Friday for the pre- and post-game show. You guys were absolutely sensational. I can't thank you enough, man. Really. Where are we on the like list right now? Thank you, guys. Please hit it. 155? Guys, do me a favor. Please hit the like button. Um, you've been excellent. First hour, a little bit over. 155? Hit the like button. We'll talk about Vic Fangio and Kellen Moore. Hit the like button. Keep it here, National Football Show. If you missed any of today's show on the Jacob Media channel, listen to the podcast on your way home. Available on YouTube, Apple, and Spotify.